All right, folks, we're here with Jason Shirk from the Microsoft Security Engineering Center Security Science. And people have probably heard about the uh, MSRC, the Response Center. Maybe not so much this, uh, this group. Tell me a little bit about uh, your group and what you do. So whereas the Microsoft Security Response Center is focused on the bulletins that are put out that pretty much everybody who uses Windows is familiar with and the yeah. updates that, that we know we need on our systems to help keep them secure, uh, my team is much more proactive. We're involved in researching where security is going, making sure that we're ahead of the curve, making sure we know what hackers are doing. Um, we're a sister organization to uh, research and development and also report up through Craig Mundy. And, uh, and the, uh, the tool that uh, you're here to talk about today is called Bang Exploitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me a little bit about this. What, what is this tool? So Bang Exploitable Crash Analyzer is a plugin to the Windows Debugger, or WinDBG.exe, which is a publicly available tool. And when you have an application and it receives unexpected data, bad things can happen sometimes. Yeah. Uh, not just the application going away, but there may be unintended consequences also. Uh, potentially, we'll say an elevation of privilege from a regular user to an administrator, or uh, the holy grail of uh, executing arbitrary code. Yeah. You know, something that an attacker would really love to get their hands on. So what Bang Exploitable does is it looks through these very complicated crashes and uh, it does a couple of things. First of all... See, the logs mm -hmm. that come from these crashes are big and they can mm -hmm. be messy to go through. Absolutely. So the, the tool helps us with that, right? Yeah, there's a very finite number of people who understand what these logs yeah. even mean. Yeah. Um, I don't know if... Uh, you know, we've it's all like seen... reading the matrix. That's right. Yeah. It really is. And it, it takes a special touch. Just like, you know, Neo, after a while, he, he can just read it, <laughs> yeah. right? It's the same sort of thing. Um, and because it is so difficult and the pool of resources to uh, interpret those crashes is so limited, um, the first thing that the tool does is it helps us understand what crashes belong to what issues in the code. Because you can have... How, how was that done before the tool? What, what was the normal process? Manually. So someone has to go through all of those. Correct. Someone with a high level of knowledge, someone who can read the matrix, has to sit and sift through all of these. Absolutely, and it can take a really long time. Um, a crash might take just a couple of minutes to look at and understand what's going on if it's a well-known issue, or it can take days or longer for a, a single crash. So if you're dealing with crashes in you know, the tens or the hundreds or the thousands even, that can you know, really suck yeah. some resources. And how did uh, Bang Exploitable Crash Analyzer f uh, change that? So we take some hashes of the programs uh, and of the crashes particularly and kind of see what caused the crash to happen. We have a major hash, which we can get really technical and go into what all those things are, and, and we have a minor hash. A major hash says uh, basically that there's a problem in this general area of code, yeah. whereas a minor hash says this is the exact thing that happened. And you can have several minors to one major. So uh, a major bucket tells us generally this piece of code has some issue, but the miners say, well, there's maybe different ways to get to this piece of code. Just like with your car, if you're losing power and the car's making a funny noise, it could all be a problem with your fuel injectors. Yeah. So it automates the process of taking these crashes and narrowing them down. Um, that's the first thing that it does. An example that we've got of that is we took uh, kind of an internal competition, actually, uh, before the last blue hat. And we took an application that Microsoft acquired in a rather large acquisition that had never been tested before for security. Mm -hmm. And we handed it to four teams of highly skilled hackers. Yeah. And they, they used these various tools to try and find bugs in a two-week period. Across the two weeks, they found 57 distinct crashes, or 57 of those minor bucket issues, mm -hmm. right? But if we sift them down from the major issues into the minor issues, we see that of those 57 crashes, there were actually 15 underlying problems or yeah. underlying issues in the code. So that's almost a fourfold reduction, and that's pretty huge. So immediately, that saves the time of someone having to sift through all these different logs and uh, tells you you've got 15 issues that you need to look at. Now, mm -hmm. does it tell you, how, how precise does it tell you where you need to look in your code? Uh, within five lines wow. of your code. So it's, it's pretty close. Or within, I, I suppose it's not five lines, it's five frames, but that's a page of code maybe. Yeah. Right? It's not a whole lot. And so it's, it's pretty, um, pretty succinct. 
Now, additionally, the second thing that Bang Exploitable Crash Analyzer does, and what gives it its name, is we take some of our security expertise and we put it into the program, and depending on what caused the crash and what was going on in the system during the crash, we tell you how exploitable we feel that issue actually is. So of the 57 initial crashes that we got, one issue came back as probably exploitable. And we took that issue, we looked at it, it was real, it wasn't a false positive, and we handed it off to that product team and they fixed the issue because it was an issue beyond the other 15 that need to be fixed. They're all yeah. code quality issues, yeah. right? One issue could potentially put a user at risk. Yeah, you need to stack rank those so that the, the big problem gets solved first. Absolutely, and that's really what the tool is about, is prioritizing. Uh, the, the crashes. Uh, we particularly wanted to get this tool out to ISVs and third-party developers. Um, I know, for example, Adobe recently announced that they're using it mm -hmm. and uh, is helping them in their implementation of the SDL. So how many people are using this so far? So we released it at CanSec West, which was a conference in Vancouver in March. And what kind of conference is that for people that don't know? It's a conference where all the hackers who build the tools that the other hackers use kind of go. Yeah. It's uh, really a great conference. Uh, the guy who puts it on, Dragos, is a fantastic guy that everybody mm -hmm. sort of knows. And uh, because of that, year in, year out, he's got great presenters. Yeah. So we released it at that conference, but it's fairly small. There were about 400 people at the conference. Since then, though, we've had about 10,000 downloads of the tool. We've got a lot of people wow. using it. So this this tool is for security, but it seems like it would be just a general great tool just f for bugs in general. Right now we're seeing it mostly used within the security realm, but we see it expanding certainly into just general development because of the usefulness of it. Um, and, and in fact, beyond that, if people think that there are useful things that they can do with it, we didn't just release the tool and send everybody a binary. This is open source. Really? So. It's not a proprietary, vastly expensive tool then? That's right. <laughs> it's free. WinDBG is free it's and free Bang Exploitable and is free. And it's open source. Absolutely. That's great. Which means that if someone wants to make a change because it fits their workflow better or their mm -hmm. work process better, they're welcome to do it. Great. And it's in the name of security, so more power to them. That's right. Uh, it uses the uh, MSPL, or the Microsoft Public License. And uh, that is a BSD style license that allows them to do whatever they want as long as they give us attribution. So let's go, this is an example where uh, we're in WinDBG, the Windows debugger, mm -hmm. and it's caught a crash. Uh, so we've got a, a G here, it tells it go. So we get the crash information. And you see here we actually type bang exploitable. And it comes back and it tells us very simply that this issue is probably exploitable and why read access violation to block data move and is therefore classified as probably exploitable. In other words, we're moving data that we shouldn't be able to move. Yeah. Right. So somebody needs to go and look at this and find out if it's real. We also, you'll notice we have the hash here, the major and the minor hash that we were talking about, and we give an idea of where it happened. We've got a, a hex address. So this is a, the basic mode, just bang exploitable is all you type and that's so what, quick and what dirty. you get. Quick yeah. and dirty. Uh, and this is what most people need. Beyond that, we've got a verbose mode. Yeah. Now this is for the security expert to look at and it tells them a little bit of information about the basic block beyond what we said before. We know that this is an exception. This is a different issue that we're looking at here. Uh, in this case, the data from a faulting address is later used as the target for a branch. In other words, in this instance, the uh, user was able to put some sort of data in that later was executed. Again, probably exploitable. Yeah. Uh, it's not a slam dunk, depends on what the data is, but somebody really needs to look at it. As you can see, we've got the, ha the hash spelled out here. We've always got a recommended bug title. One of the big things that we really wanted to do here is kind of shift the burden of proof. A lot of times in development, you have a very senior developer and a very junior tester. Yeah. And for a junior tester to get a senior developer to uh, really look at an issue that they think is important, they need to tell them why it's important. Well, a title that says probably exploitable, data from faulting address controls code flow starting at blah, right? Big scary title. That's yeah. this junior developer or junior tester saying, hey, Microsoft says that this is probably exploitable. Yeah, and, and this it's is why. not their word. I mean, they're not saying this is probably exploitable. They're, this is a tool that's uh, given an, a non partisan uh, answer. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we're not um, absolutely infallible, but yeah. we do have a low false positive rate. 
and false negatives. In other words, saying something is not exploitable when it is exploitable, we consider it to be uh, failure. Yeah. Right? That's not okay. Yeah. But the, it can be a little noisy from time to time, but it's worthwhile because we have a very high hit rate on issues that actually are exploitable that the tool comes back and tells us are. Yeah, and where can people find this tool? So they can download this tool from Microsoft.com slash security slash msec, M-S-E-C. And we'll link to that in the text here. Great. Great, it was uh, awesome seeing this. I, I love what you guys are doing, so come back anytime. Great, thanks Larry.